Mr. Vietnam, Mr. Western, friend of the poor, a foreigner loves Vietnam. Those are the names that many people call Bernard Curthen, a Belgian who has more than 27 years working with and helping needy people in Vietnam. After graduating from university, Mr. Bernard had nine years working for NGOs in Bangladesh and three years working in Paris, France, applying for fundings for development countries. In 1995, he was interested in Vietnam and began the journey of establishing and operating Mekong Plus, a non-governmental organization that helps manage Mekong quilts. A business that operates as a normal trading company, but spends all of its profits for social work. Sharing Vietnam today will introduce to you the special story. Welcome to Sharing Vietnam on VTC10 NetViet channel. Joining our program today is Mr. Bernard Kevin, a Belgian man who shares special love for Vietnam and had 27 years dedicating to help those in need here. Thank you very much for joining our program. Thank you for having me. I know that you are called by many Vietnamese people with a very familiar name, Mr. Vietnam on Vietnam. Could you share a little bit story behind that unique name? I, I don't know who uh, first called me like this. I, it, maybe it's because I've been here for a long time, uh, because I speak a little bit Vietnamese. Uh, maybe I'm familiar to, to work with uh, many people uh, doing social work and so on. So they call me like this. I'm happy. I'm happy with this name. 27 years living in Vietnam and never get tired of helping people with difficulties here. What, what makes you so persistent with this choice? No, not tired at all. Actually, uh, you know, uh, I believe we, are, we make a difference. We have some good results. And most of all, what makes me more happy is that we have more and more Vietnamese people in the team who are getting involved and who take responsibility. So now, you know, I'm not doing uh, much work directly myself and just support the Vietnamese team. So this is, uh, uh, it, you know, you're not allowed to be tired, really. When poor people, you know, they have no choice. They cannot say, oh, you know, I'm tired. No, no, <laughs> poor people, they have to continue all the time. If you don't work today, you have no food today. So, no, I'm, I don't feel tired at all. I mean, as long as we can make a difference, I'm quite happy. Have you ever implemented any project to help those in need during Vietnamese Tet holiday? No, no, no. During Tet, you cannot do anything. But before Tet, before Tet, you can. Like uh, in our project, we had, uh, you know, end of the year celebration. So a lot of singing, uh, sharing, making gifts and uh, good meal together. All the staff uh, come and uh, spend a few hours uh, very happy. You know, Tet is a, such a special occasion. So people are very uh, worried they want to have a good Tet, you know. So it's important that we have uh, uh, make maybe some 13-month uh, salary or some uh, incentives so they have some money. I mean, everything is more expensive during Tet, you know, like the bus travel, etc. So people spend a lot of money, so they need a bit extra. So yes, uh, at the end of the year, you know, we, we must have, a, you know, a staff meetings, staff celebration, and it's a happy moment to share the experience of the year, what was good, what we should do better for the next year. And yeah, <laughs> you cannot miss it. <laughs> so is there a mission in your life? That's why you, you dedicated so much time? Well, uh, you know, I, I feel I'm uh, lucky. You know, because I was born in a, in a big family, but my parents never um, uh, limited uh, my education. I could study whatever I wanted, as long as I wanted. I had a lot of support from uh, my, my parents, so I felt, you know, that other people should have uh, also this chance. So I'm, I feel so sorry. I still remember this little girl in uh, Hao Yang, uh, province and uh, she was crying because she wanted to go to school but the parents said no now it's the turn of your younger brother we have no money for you and I felt it was so unfair you know it's uh, sometimes uh, in uh, in the West in uh, in a rich country ch children say oh I don't want to go to school 
But here, when I see these young Vietnamese people, and they are so keen to go uh, to school and to study more so that they can improve their condition, they can also help their parents. So I feel, you know, it's an absolute necessity to help them. What makes you establish Mekong Plus? Um, well, I came to Vietnam and, you know, you need an organization. You need to build a team. Uh, you need to resources, financial resources. So at the beginning, we had, I had to help. Uh, I had to ask my parents to help, my friends and so. And uh, so now we have a bigger team. We have more, a bigger budget. And I must say that also we get a lot of support from the Vietnamese people. You know, it's incredible, but very poor people. Like I, I heard the other day in Duklin, in Binh Thuan, that poor people, when they get a loan uh, to invest in chicken gun, they also make a some contribution for the scholarship fund so that other children, other families could send their children to school. I think it's amazing. I mean, these people are living with less than one euro per day and they still make a contribution. So I think, uh, you know, this is the whole meaning of Mekong Plus, so that many people can join forces. Mekong Quills was published in 2001 as a project to create more jobs and generate income for more than 200 women in remote areas in Đức Linh, Tánh Linh, Hàm Thuận Nam, Bình Thuận Province, Long Mỹ, An Giang, and Ram Duong District, Sui Rieng Province in Cambodia. In this project, these women were taught how to make handmade products based on local available materials with designs from Mekong Plus. Then the products will be distributed to market by Mekong Quilts with three retail outlets in Vietnam and two in Cambodia. Products such as bamboo bicycles and handicrafts are often the favorite items of international tourists. All profits will be used to award scholarships to poor children, train farmers and provide loans to the disadvantaged communities. Because for Bernard Curvin, the concept of voluntary work is not only to receive money from generous individuals or organizations, but also to utilize the money to make profit, reinvest and run other meaningful projects. Với công việc hiện tại của mình là thiết kế thì khi mà mình đi xuống những cái vùng dự án thì mình thấy được những cái sản phẩm mà do chính mình thiết kế ra và được bàn tay của những người phụ nữ đã thực hiện nên thành sản phẩm. À, những cái sản phẩm của mình khi mà đến tay được người tiêu dùng thì mình cảm thấy rất là ý nghĩa bởi vì nó tạo một cái việc làm, một cái thu nhập để cho những cái phụ nữ này có thêm cái nguồn thu nhập và cái thời gian để chăm sóc con cái của họ đến trường. Is creating jobs for disadvantaged people in Vietnam is the key mission for the Mekong Plus, or is there anything else? Designed? Well, we, we believe, uh, you know, at Mekong Plus, uh, we believe that everything is important. I don't want you as a mother to choose between what is important, education or health or the house or income. No, I think you want everything. You want the children to go to school. You want to have healthy children. You want to have a safe house. You want also to have a stable income. So our approach at Mekong Plus is integrated development. That we talk with the people and tr try to see what, is, uh, what are the priorities, what do you want to do. But with one condition is that you should be very much involved. Don't expect 100% to come from Mekong Plus. No, never. You know, we are just helping you, but the main, the main job will be done by yourself. What would you say are some of the challenges that you face running a social enterprise in Vietnam? Uh, many, many challenges. <laughs> you know, uh, in every society you have people who are uh, innovative, who move uh, first, and then you have more people who just follow uh, more slowly. Right now, for example, many people talk about climate change, about pollution, about uh, using less plastic. So in our organization, we have decided no more plastic bottle, you know, no more. And uh, if you have one, you just keep it, you know, this is, but it's very, very difficult. 
uh, to uh, make many people uh, understand this, that you know, we should all work together very, very much so that there would be no more plastic waste, that we should try, you know, I use my bicycle. I, I think many people could also use a bicycle. You, you feel much healthier doing some exercise instead of you know, just doing a few hundred meters on the Honda. I mean, it's really a bit crazy. Uh, I think many people should try to uh, care for a safer, healthier environment. And it takes time. It takes so much time. Everybody sees that the climate is changing. You know, we know Australia is burning, but we also know that in the Mekong Delta, the salt water is coming in. And uh, people, some people cannot grow rice. They stop rising, uh, growing paddy, and they have to uh, raise uh, shrimps instead. So, you know, the impact for Vietnam is very big and very quick. So I think we have a big responsibility. I hope that more and more people, you know, will move uh, a bit more quickly. <laughs> oh, that's a very touching story. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was seven years old. I was asking my mother when I could go, you know, to the city on the bicycle. And she said, yes, yes, okay, be careful. And so, so I've always uh, liked to, to go on a bicycle. I, you know, I think sometimes it's a bit funny because sometimes people take their car, they take the motorcycle to the, go to the gym. You know, so they spend money to, for the motorcycle and they spend again money for the jeep. So I think they could walk or maybe they could uh, take a bicycle, you know, if the distance is not too big. I think bicycle is uh, really fine. And, uh, you know, in the traffic in uh, Ho Chi Minh City, I feel, you know, I think it's uh, quite easy uh, on a bicycle. I just like it. <laughs> and we organize uh, now uh, many uh, tours, you know, for vi people visiting Vietnam. They come to uh, visit the project, but we give them, uh, you know, we make uh, bamboo bikes. We, we make bicycles in uh, ba bamboo. And so it's very, it's very safe, it's very uh, soft, it's very good riding. And so they come and visit the village just, just biking. Uh, and so the, when you are on a bicycle, the contact with the villagers is so good. You know, if you come in, on a motorcycle with your helmet or if you come in an air-conditioned car, you know, like uh, you're coming from another planet. But if you are coming, uh, you know, sweating on your, motor, on your bicycle, then the people are very friendly and say hello, hello, and all the way, and I say ciao. So uh, the contact is very friendly and much better. During this journey, is there any milestones or footprints that you think is most accomplished, in your opinion? You know, my, my biggest satisfaction is, uh, you know, I started with two or three people and now we are maybe 200. 200 people in the team who are, I think they have a very high commitment. You know, when they, the salaries are not big. As a social organization, you know, for many years, no increase at all. Prices, market price increase, but we have no money to increase salaries. Yet, when they get their salary, they make a donation because they know that we have not been able to help many people. And so the staff, they make every month, every month some donation. So I'm very proud, extremely proud of the, 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 the teams of uh, working with Mekong Plus that they, it's not only a job, you know, it's a really a life commitment. Okay, my last question for you is why Vietnam? Is there any other country that you would like to do the same help? Uh, why not? Uh, actually, I followed my wife, you know, she, I'm <laughs> she's Vietnamese, so I just followed and said, why not? You know, I like, at the beginning it was very difficult, I must say, because uh, in Vietnam, you know, there are many things which are uh, organized, that there is a lot of discipline, and, you know, as Europeans, we are used to a very free society, uh, speak freely, etc. Uh, in Vietnam, you have to learn the, the rules. Uh, so at the beginning it was difficult, but now I realize also all the benefits that, you know, for example, we work in many, many schools, in 200 schools in Vietnam, and this we can do because once you have a good understanding with the government, with the local authorities, then there is this discipline, you have a system, you know, that they will replicate, and uh, you don't need to do everything again and again, because the teachers that you have trained will train other teachers and so on. Thank you very much for joining our program today. I really appreciate all your good work for the society. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for following our program today. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.